Persian Durkin, great tune. Um, thanks for clicking on this video. This is the first in my intermediate lesson series. There'll be quite a few more videos um, during the coming months to explain basically um, techniques for fiddle playing. Um, starting at the very beginning now, of course, motivation. I think that's a hugely important factor, um, particularly if you're first trying to scrape out a half decent melody on the violin. In fact, um, when you are playing folk melodies on the instrument, it's usually called a fiddle, which is quite handy really because um, the rules aren't quite as strict for fiddle playing and I think it's far more um, relaxed and fun. Um, so that it's not there to be taken too seriously, perhaps. Um, I believe it's important to structure your playing around the style of fiddle music that interests you the most. That's what will motivate you. Um, I started first by listening to a, a terrific fiddle player called Dave Swarbrick um, when he played for Fairport Convention. That got me hooked and um, because I worked in London as a young man um, I started to take interest in the Irish fiddle music that was being played in the pubs. Um, so my interest took me in that direction. Um, I simply just wanted to play Irish fiddle music and tunes in my local session as, with a lot of confidence. Um, because it seemed that everyone else could play a lot better than me and I felt rather sort of shy in a way because I was reluctant to, to sort of play, play out a great deal but I, I persevered and um, I didn't let it put me off. I spent a lot of time practicing and trying to visit and play in local live sessions whenever I could. Now, um, se sessions in the UK are generally organised uh, in a local pub and involve a group of like-minded musicians, amateur musician musicians generally, meeting to together for a social event. Um, the music's spontaneous and anyone can, can lead by starting a tune. So sessions are very useful for learning a lot of the more popular melodies and also it can assist you with being able to improve your ability to be able to improvise and maybe learn new tunes by playing quietly along with the others until you get the hang of things. So the, the structure of this, these lessons will be um, not particularly geared to any, any particular style or genre of fiddle playing but it, I will try and show you a variety of techniques that can be used right across the board in all types of different styles, etc. So <clears throat> that's, that's the approach I'll be using. So in these lessons, I want to try and pass on the best techniques that I've discovered whilst developing my own playing technique and style and hopefully giving you the confidence to play at a live music session in the company of other musicians. Um, initially the tunes may be based on simple jigs and reels but they will develop in time to look at all sorts of various rhythms. I should also state that I'm primarily interested in playing fiddle music for dancers. So many of the tunes I use for examples will be quite rhythmical. I doubt that I will be tackling anything by um, John Cage, for instance, unless you've got um, 4 minutes and 33 seconds to spare. OK, so um, maybe I should insert a nice long break. In. No, no, no. Um, the point is now, is I think, to get stuck in and see what we can do. Um, I also am hoping to encourage you to read musical notation because I taught myself that 
many, many years ago, and it stood me in good stead for many years um, and enables me to, to notate tunes quite quickly. So I'll be trying to impart some of that into these lessons as well. Just, just very basic stuff. Okay, so uh, you've got your fiddle. Um, you may have um, a shoulder rest. It doesn't really matter whether you have or not. I personally don't play with a shoulder rest because it's just, I never, never ever tried one out when I first started. So I've got used to, to, to playing the fiddle like that. But obviously um, the thing is tuned up to A, sorry, G, D, A, E. So G, D, A, E. You may have fine tuners on here, um, a lot of fiddle players do, um, because it makes it so quick and simple to retune the violin or the fiddle. Of course, classical musicians don't tend to do that because they believe the tone of the instrument is affected by that. But for fiddle musicians, we're perhaps more interested in being able to retune the thing quickly and get it get it playing um, in some sort of semblance of order. So that's why um, this, this fiddle has got the individual tuners on the um, on this, this bridge down, this not bridge, tailstock, tailstock, that's right. Okay, so um, I should also mention as well, just going on a little bit about the instrument, um, the windings, the way you wind your strings on. You, I'm assuming you know this, but if you don't, it's a good idea to sort of wind the string so that they are forcing the peg into the peg box. So in other words, you start from the middle of the string and then you kind of wind a string towards the edge of the peg box. And that kind of forces the peg in and stops it from slipping which is handy if it's something you're not doing and you're suffering from strings that keep going out of tune. Well, if you try that, it might make things a lot better for you. Okay, so bow tension. I must admit, I never have my bow too taut. Um, I've seen players have the thing really, 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 really taut like that. But I, I must admit, I tend to like to get a little bit of movement going now. I know you're not supposed to touch the hair. I should probably get told off about that, but I like a little bit of movement there so that the thing's not too, too taut. And kicking off. So um, yeah, we're all kicking off. We need to start really from um, the, perhaps the, the D string. Um, so now generally you're meant to sort of play the thing between the um, the ebony fingerboard or whatever your fingerboard's made of and the bridge. You're supposed to play in the middle. But invariably you'll notice I'm playing down here somewhere, which is totally wrong of course. But hey, it's fiddle music. But if you can try to get your bow to sit somewhere in the middle of the between that um, end of that fingerboard and the bridge, then it will give a little bit more projection to the sound. So, so that's 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 the theory anyway. Now, holding the bow. Now, as you may know, I don't hold the bow in a regular fashion, but I've been looking at this, and there are various very very good YouTube videos showing me to hold the bow like something like this, with my thumb down there like that. Now that's, I believe, how you're meant to hold the bow. Something like that. Okay, so that's the official way and I would advise you to use that technique because I use the wrong technique. I, I tend to hold the bow in, my, in the most comfortable fashion um, that I see fit, which means that... Um, because the YouTube wasn't around when I started playing the fiddle. In fact, the internet wasn't around. So uh, I had to make it all up for myself. So I just grabbed hold of the bow and just held it how I 
felt it was most comfortable. So please ignore the way I hold the bow. I'm not trying to teach you that technique. I want to try and teach you basically how to get a tune out of this, this instrument. So we, we're starting off on the D string and all we're going to do is just get the bow somewhere in the middle like that and we're going to pull down on one long stroke. Okay, dead simple. So that's one long stroke, pulling downwards way. Now that's a crotchet. There are four of those in a measure or, or a bar. One, two, three, four. So let's play four crotchets. You ready? That's crazy. Why on earth would you do that? No, you want to go backwards and forwards, of course. A lot simpler. A bit like sawing through a piece of wood. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Four crotches in a row. Dead simple. So next thing is let's play the A string. Okay. Let's go a little bit more advanced. Let's play the D string four times followed by the A string. Ready? Three, four. Do it again. Okay, so far so good. Now you'll see the notation is appearing on the screen as well because I want you to remember those notes. Um, so basically we're going to now insert a quaver. Now a quaver is basically half a crotchet. So there are eight quavers in a bar or a measure, uh, four crotchets in a bar or measure and eight quavers. So we'll play one crotchet on the D string followed by two quavers. Okay followed by a further crotchet on the D string, followed by two quavers. So that sounds like this. Now you will notice something. I am going down, up, down. Then I'm going up, down, up. So there's a little diagram appearing now. You can see that with arrows. So you can see exactly what I'm doing. So it's... Easy peasy. Shuffle bowing. That's what that is, basically. Um, that's a very, very, very important bow stroke. I use that in dozens of tunes over and over and it's so simple to learn do it on the A string ready three four okay get more complicated start on the D string do that for a couple of measures and then jump to the A string ready the notation is on the screen fast, I'll slow it down. Okay, let's put some more notes in now. Um, first finger on the first note of the D string. That one. So we're going to play this now. We're going to play um, the same shuffle bowing, but this time we're going to go. Okay, so follow me. Three, four.
Let's get a little bit more complicated. We'll just go on to the um, A string. So we've got four notes now. We've got the D and then we've got the E. And then on the A string, we've got the A, which is the open string, and we've got the B. So we've got four notes. Let's see if we can get a tune. Nice and straightforward. So let's carry on. Three, four. Okay, it doesn't sound sounds rather wooden at the moment. The reason is because we haven't got that motivation thing going. Um, we haven't got our influences going. In other words, you listen to so much great fiddle music and it's it's swinging along and everything. Well, at the moment, this is quite wooden. Let's just try and add a little bit of swing to the thing. So I'll show you what I mean first. Three, four. <laughs> difference and if you want to get really jazzy um, maybe you're an old time uh, fan um, you can play two strings at once And so on. Now you've got some idea now where we're going with this because I'm trying to get you to think about the bowing. It's irrelevant the tune at the moment, it's the bowing and it's the rhythm that's so important. That's really half 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 the thing with fiddle playing, and it's hearing the tunes in your head. That's where the motivation and having the uh, taking the the enthusiasm that you feel when you hear certain genres of, of fiddle music and trying to transfer that into your into your playing that that's that's the driving force that's what gives you your style so I'm just kind of touching on it at the moment I think I've given you perhaps enough to think about for this particular lesson but I will continue along this theme in my next lesson so um, don't forget to give me the feedback um, because, of course, that is what will guide me through this series of lessons. But in the meantime, have fun with your fiddle playing and I'll try and get another lesson up as soon as I possibly can. And best of, best of luck. Bye bye now.